Are you ready for a little story time with Mama G? Yes. Story time with Mama G. There's glitter in the air. Pink, where are you? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to make such a mess here that they never forget me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I want you to track your story with mine. It's, it's messy business, uh, a woman, in, a legend in the making. Uh, I had abuse when I was a kid. Many of you had also. And uh, when I was a little girl, around five, I, the goddess would come to me and she would sit on my bed and I could feel her radiance much like you felt one another's radiance today. And it sent me on a mission. Somehow I got the download at five that I was supposed to make the world better. Anybody else have these weird downloads when they're little about what, <laughs> what your life path is? Like literally, what are we doing, sisters, at five years old, having, like, wanting to change the world? But that's what women are. That's what women are. We are about community. We are about uplifting others, and it starts when we're little girls. So never overlook a little girl in her dreams. I'm sure you don't. So I was, I actually spent my teenage years going from temples, the churches, the synagogues, looking for the goddess because I figured somewhere someone must worship her because like, I can't be the only person that she came and sat on her bed <laughs> and awakened her. Uh, so I, fa I tried to find her. But, you know, we don't have, uh, the goddess isn't worshipped. It's, you know, Buddhism, it's uh, Islam, it's Judaism, it's Catholicism, it's Episcopalianism, uh, fundamentalism, it's all kinds of other things, but it isn't the divine feminine. So um, I stopped looking for her and I, I, I actually, you know, when you have abuse, you kind of contract because there's so much shame in your body and shame is, is different than embarrassment. Embarrassment it comes, it goes, but shame lodges itself in your heart, your psyche, your soul, your solar plexus, your mind, your pussy, and shut, begins to slowly shut all the doors and shut you down. And that, that's what happened for me. And um, I was, came to New York to become an actress, but I didn't audition because I knew that I didn't know who I was, so why do that? So, but one day, um, after going to an audition and being told that I was always going to be cast in roles way older than I was because I had absolutely no turn on. And I say that because I want you to know that if you have an experience of yourself where you do not know how to consistently plug into that aspect of your life force, worry not, I got you. It is accessible, it is terrifying, you can overcome the fear and access your own power. So I ended up taking a class that allowed me to have a homework where I was supposed to pleasure myself. <sighs> I'd never done that before. I'd taken care of my parents. I'd taken care of my brothers. I'd taken care of my bosses. I took care of my girlfriends. I took care of everyone, but I never really took care of myself. So even buying flowers for myself was new for me, and even uh, kind of cleaning up my apartment and taking a beautiful bath uh, for myself was all new for me. So I did those things and then I had this experience that changed my life, which is I set the flowers up, I had my little special drinks and my little snacks and, and I was feeling like, oh wow, time and space is different when you're in pleasure. And so I one of the parts of the exercises was to look in the mirror at myself. So I look in the mirror and I, I see my own eyes in the mirror. And what I see is the goddess. And I was like, oh shit, motherfucker, cocksuckers, motherfucker. This is where she's hiding all these years? I've been like going to temple, to synagogue, to churches, and she's been in me all these years? Like how fucked up is that? Uh, what I need to do immediately is tell other women because I know other women are equally disenfranchised, equally stuck, equally fucked. And and I, because I saw my girlfriends, they weren't going for the, the jobs that were theirs to get. They weren't going for the partnerships that were theirs to get. I, I, I saw them selling themselves short financially spiritually, physically, uh, romantically, in all the ways, compromising, following other people's tracks, not theirs. 
So I knew that women had no idea that the goddess lived in them and that the access point to receive her was pleasure. So here's the thing. I, ha I knew at that moment that I had to become an expert in the thing that terrified me the most, which I had been a, like a sexless uh, uh, hermit. What do they call that? Celibate hermit for like 10 years. That's how I spent my 20s, kids. That's how this queen spent her 20s. Celibate hermit, celibate hermit. Let's celebrate the celibate hermit. Who else was a celibate hermit for any period of her life? I just want to know who my sisters are. Janet, yes. Jen, yes. I, uh, uh, yes, I, I, I celebrate you. Hermit, hermitage and celibacy is underrated. It, it's a good springboard for other things. Okay, so I end up, of course, being the drama queen that I am, moving into a sex... Mm, training facility slash commune uh, and learning this practice called extended massive orgasm uh, where over about a period of five years I became certified in the practice of extended massive orgasm uh, because you have to uh, apprentice yourself to that which scares you. The thing that terrifies you is what you must study uh, and you, what, what, you, what you must apprehend. So I, be, I, I learned all about sensuality. I I had the time of my life in that place. And uh, eventually, it wasn't for me to live there for evs. I, I got all the degrees that I wanted to receive, and then I moved out because I knew that my mission was to uh, teach women. And um, basically, I was a broke-ass hippie chick with a dream uh, and um, a baby. And uh, married and uh, just really not knowing what the fuck to do. So I threw a lot of shit at the wall. Who's at the throw shit at the wall phase of creating her legend? Where she doesn't know, yeah, Priscilla, that's right. Uh, where she doesn't, yes, Sarah, yes, Ashley, yes, Jacqueline, yes, Dawn, yes, 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 Amy, yes, Nina. Okay, so the throw shit at the wall phase is interesting, right? because you don't know what you're doing, but you're doing things, and probably they're not that financially rewarding, but you're doing things, and, and, then, and maybe they're not exactly yours, but you're doing things, okay. So what happened uh, for me is, um, uh, is, is I just kept trying and failing at, at teaching things, a and I want to say that it's usually at this point that a woman shuts down her calling. Who's ever shut down her calling? Like you know it, but then you're like, oh, I can't do that. I can't find my way. Fuck you, goddess, God, fuck you. I'm not doing it then because I cannot find my, oh, yeah, that right, right on, Ashley, right on, right on. So you, if you can't, um, this is a place where women stop because there's so much risk in following the divine calling and there's so much risk in not, very often the risk in following it wins. Um, but here's the thing, you don't get to leadership inside your own head. You can't will yourself into leadership. You have to put feet on the ground. You have to take action. So it was learning how to come was my first, and uh, uh, the extended massive orgasm was, was the uh, place I started. Uh, throwing some shit at the wall once I left the commune uh, was the next place I went with teaching all kinds of crazy classes and making zero money and working waiting tables and wonderful, uh, thank God for bridge jobs. And then, um, what happened was I decided uh, that I, I, I needed to, uh, you know, with this baby and teaching classes, I needed a bigger space. So I took my stack of quarters and God knows what else, credit cards, and, and took a lease on a brownstone because I thought that will look nice when people come. And, uh, <laughs> okay, so I got the first month rent, took the lease. And here's the thing. I had the vision was big. The risk was big, the vision was big. Often they go hand in hand. The bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. So I go, I take this brownstone, I'm teaching classes uh, in, in the living room, and then my baby is, is you know a few months old. I'm nursing her, I turn on the TV to distract myself from uh, the uncomfortable sensation in my nipples, uh, you know, and, and, uh, she, and I see this movie, Dangerous Beauty which is about a courtesan. I never even heard of courtesans. Did you ever hear of courtesans? They were the coolest women on earth. They're really spirit, spiritual guides. So uh, this woman is uh, being trained by her mother in the art of being a courtesan. See the movie, it's so damn good. And, uh, and I realize, oh my goddess, what I have to do 
is I have to open a courtesan academy in New York City. I have to go. I have to teach women. And I had just become a mama myself, so I thought, I'll, 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 I'll call it Mama Gina School of Womanly Arts. And uh, I, I'll, I'll open the f doors, and I, I will be fantastic, and I will write books, and I will have appearances, and people will come, and, and it's going to be amazing.